Hello everyone. Welcome to the collaborative learning session with Dr. Bhushan Bhagat sir. Myself, Mayurish Lange. Today I am here to present a few neurological disorders, epilepsy and patient on antidepressant drugs guided by Dr. Bhushan Bhagat sir. Being a health professional, it is very essential that we have a proper knowledge about management of neurological disorders. So we will see epilepsy in detail. Let's begin. The epilepsy is a group of disorders characterized by chronic, recurrent, and proximal changes in neurological function caused by abnormalities in the electrical activity of the brain. Each episode of neurological dysfunction is called a seizure. The seizure may be convulsive when accompanied by motor manifestations or may be manifested by other changes in neurological function. This is how a patient of epilepsy looks. He has a stiff body, back arc, epileptic cry. Incontinence, etiology and pathogenesis. Seventy percent of all cases cannot be determined. When a cause of seizure is known, the term used are either acquired or secondary syphilis. The most common cause of adult epilepsy is cerebro, followed by primary and metastatic brain tumors, vascular disease such as stroke, brain attack, systemic disorders, infection, hypertension. And diabetes, as well as electrolytic imbalance, dehydration, and lack of oxygen, high doses and withdrawal from certain drugs, epilepsy pathogenesis at the cellular level leads the to system that maintains the balance between excitation and inhibition of brain electric activity. Other medical conditions resembling epilepsy: hyperventilation, hypoglycemia, migraine, transient ischemic attack. syncope pseudo seizure transient gobal amnesia sleep disorders diagnosing epilepsy three parameters in the diagnosis health history taking neurological examination laboratory testing or health history taking sometimes the patient has no memory of the event therefore eye witness observation is very helpful family history social history and past medical history are also important neurological examination it is done to identify areas of abnormal brain electric activity as well as assess the patient motor and sensory skills laboratory testing blood studies and special testing such as eeg ct mri pet and neurological sonography and lumbar puncture dental management we must make sure whether the patient has any past history of epilepsy and for this we must take the following measures one take complete medical history two list medications patient is taking three schedule proper frequency of oral hygiene four ensure proper dental lightening five treatment plan and design restoration to minimize risk questions to be asked to a dental patient with epilepsy questions to be asked on the day of appointment problems that a dentist may encounter first trauma minor oral injuries such as tongue biting frequently lead to tooth injuries patient with epilepsy can be at risk of fracture because it is associated with osteopenia and osteomalacia periodontal problems gingival overgrowth is a complication of penetwine 50% of patients taking this medica medication will develop gingival hyperplasia within 12 to 14 months of initiation of treatment use of chlorhexidine folic acid rinses or both decrease the severity of condition valproic acid can cause direct bone marrow suppression which can impair Wound healing and increased post-operative bleeding and infections. Hematological effects of valproic acid is decreased platelet count. Prostodontic problem such as discrepancy of incisor restorations, use of fixed rather than removable prosthesis, and inclusion of additional abutments if fixed partial denture are to be used. In addition, the use of metal bases for complete denture and telescopic retention. with denture bases made of metal or reinforced with metal for nearly edentulous patient was recommended dermatological problem rash including 
Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Caesar, first in dental office. One, clear all the instruments away from the patient. Two, dental chair is in supine position. Three, place the patient on his or her side. Four, do not restrain the patient. Five, do not put your fingers in his or her mouth. Six, time the scissor. Seven, call ambulance if the scissor lasts longer than three to five minutes. Eight, call ambulance if the patient becomes cyanotic from the onset. Nine, administer oxygen at the rate of six to eight liter per minute. Ten, if the patient if the scissor lasts longer than five minutes, or for repeated scissors, administer ten milligram of dose of diazepam intramuscularly or intravenously. Or two milligram of ativan intramuscularly or intravenously, or five minute of milligram of midazolam intramuscularly or intravenously. Once the seizure is over, one do not undertake further dental treatment that day. Two try to talk to patient to bring back his consciousness. Three do not restrain the patient. Four do not allow the patient to leave the office. If he or she not fully conscious, five contact the patient's family if he is not in not alone. Do six or do a brief oral examination for injuries. Seven, depending on post ictal stage, discharge the patient home only with responsible person. Drug interaction, metronidazole, antifungal agents, and antibiotics may interfere with the. Metabolism of certain anti-epileptic drugs. Co-administration of fluconazole and phenytoin increase in phenytoin plasma concentration. Anticonvulsants unlikely to interact with fluconazole. Clidocromycin increases the plasma concentration of carbamazepine. Valproic acid may be displaced from plasma proteins, and metabolic pathway may be inhibited by high dose of aspirin. Let's move on the next topic. Oral and dental effects of antidepressants. What is depression? Depression is a mood disorder that can affect a person's daily life. It may be de de described as feeling of sadness, loss, or anger. So, some of these patients are taking antidepressant drugs. So, we so they causes and adverse effects on oral cavity. Now we will see oral and dental effects of antidepressants. The dry mouth. Dry mouth associated with dryness of the lips and throat, oral soreness or burning, altered taste sensation and halitosis, chewing, swallowing and speaking difficulties, candidiasis, impaired retention of dentures, denture induced mucosal ulceration, tooth color, tooth surface demineralization and caries. Therapeutic and preventive strategies for dry mouth. One, use of products that promote remineralization of the teeth as means of preventive, preventing caries. Two, use of topical fluoride or fluoride rinses or high strength of fluoride toothpaste. Three, use of casein phosphate or amorphous calcium phosphate CPP, ACP. Cream is also recommended for remineralization. Management of dry mouth. One, lubric oral lubricating agents or gels like arti or artificial saliva. Two, chewing of sugarless gum or CPP ACP gum. Therapeutic guidelines. One, advise patient to avoid an acidic beverages such as wine, fruit juices, soft drinks, and sport drinks. Two, use of bicarbonates. These are the classes of drugs that can induce hyposalivation. Reference. Textbook of Oral Maxifacial Surgery, 3rd edition, Dr. Nilama Malik. Textbook of Oral Maxifacial Surgery, 3rd edition, Dr. S.M. Balaji. Principle of Oral Maxifacial Surgery, 2nd edition, Peterson. Thank you.